Good morning, friends, and welcome back to Heat Transfer. Hope you had a very good Diwali. And uh, yeah, this is the last lap, the last two weeks. Let's run it well, and after that, <clears throat> you will have your winter break. Okay. Uh, so, without further ado, uh, just few things to mention that we finished convection last week finished with natural convection. And I have uploaded the notes and a few problems, two problem sheets actually. One is in the form of, uh, of a PowerPoint and uh, the other in the form uh, as a regular problem sheet. So please go through them in that order. I think the PowerPoint will initiate you and then you will be, you'll find the problems in the in the PDF document, easier to solve. Okay. Now there are two. Uh, the last topic that is left is boiling and condensation. Okay. These are extremely complex topics. But uh, what we do is we cover some very basic and fundamental theories of these, and uh, which. Anyone, any student, any engineering graduate uh, who has undertaken a course in heat transfer is expected to know. Okay, so from that point of view, even though this is the last topic, by no means is this the least important or anything. Uh, in fact, I mean, this is the last topic that I'm teaching this year, but in other years, many a times I've covered them before going to heat exchangers or radiation. So every topic that we have covered under heat exchanger, heat, heat transfer is equally important. Okay, let's keep that in mind and move on. Now, when you talk about boiling and condensation, again, this is something that we have noticed, experienced throughout our lives, right from the time we were born. Okay. We do know, for example, that if I take out a bottle of cold water from my refrigerator and leave it, you find water droplets on the, on the surface. Why? Because the moisture around us has condensed because the surface of this bottle is less than the dew point. And therefore the moisture in the air has condensed in the form of water droplets on this surface. Right. That happens immediately. You take out any cold bottle from the fridge, it will immediately happen. Right? That is condensation. If you look at our ACs, what happens? Every AC will have some dripping water. Okay, and that's why you have a tray where the water is collected, and then you have a drain pipe and the water drains out. Okay, you stand under the window where an AC is installed, you will have water droplets falling on your head. Or you will have a pipe coming out through which the water is now going into some drain. Okay. Even Now, why does that happen? That happens because you have studied refrigeration cycle, and we have also studied quite a bit here, that in the indoor unit, okay, where we have the evaporator, the temperature of the tubes through which the refrigerant flows is very low and definitely below below the dew point. So as a result, the air which is flowing over these cold tubes, okay, what we have learned is you have these tubes through which cold refrigerant is flowing. You have the ambient air which flows above the tubes, okay, and there's heat exchange between the two. It's like a heat exchanger. Um, there's heat exchange. The air loses its heat to the refrigerant and becomes colder. And that's the cold air that we see, that we experience inside the room. But one more thing that happens is as the air gets cold, the moisture content, the moisture content condenses. Okay. That's why the air that we receive from air conditioners is dry air. You will see in many of these ACs, if you look at the remote or even the control panel, there are modes like cool, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And there's also one mode for dry. The dry mode, what it does is it just reduces the temperature 
it senses what is the dew point and reduces the temperature to that level. So the air that you get inside is dry, but not as cold. Okay. That's why you know places like Kharagpur or if you wherever you know, Chennai, Kolkata, uh, Paris, Bombay, where it's very humid weather, when you enter, we sweat a lot. I mean, for a person like me, uh, there are many people who, who sweat a lot. And for us, an air conditioned room is very comfortable, not because it's cold, but because it is dry. All right. So, wh where does the dry air come in? Because the moisture from the air condenses on the refrigerant tubes. Okay. Now, here in condensation, what we will do is, however, we will look into condensation of steam to or, or vapor to liquid at the boiling point. Okay. So condensation. occurs when temperature of vapor goes below its saturation temperature corresponding to that pressure. Look, I mean, we are now mechanical engineers, OK? While boiling point, freezing point, etc. These are all things that we'll continue to use, but we will use more engineering or technological terms. Okay. Now, what happens here? Latent heat is transferred to the surface. cooling medium. OK. Now, we will primarily talk about surface condensation. OK, so there is a surface which is at a temp, sorry, which is at a temperature below the saturation point. But however, we have also seen something called direct contact condensation. In direct contact heat transfer, we have read this, right? You may have liquid coming from the top and vapor going through and the vapor condenses, OK? But our focus, however, is going to be on surface condensation, OK? Now with that, let me talk about surface condensation is of two types. One is called Film condensation. The other is called dropwise condensation or drop condensation. Now, what is the difference? Let's look at it. As the name suggests, let us say I have a cold surface here. This is gravity. The cold surface is at TW. The saturation temperature is T sat. So what happens is the liquid as it condenses, as it comes in contact with this cold wall, it condenses and it forms a film on the surface, which flows down due to gravity. OK, so we'll have the formation of a liquid film like this. OK. Please note, this looks like a boundary layer, but this is not a boundary layer. This is actually a film, a layer of liquid. We call that liquid film, and hence the name film condensation. So let's quickly write down a couple of pointers. A liquid film covers the surface. Okay. 
flows down due to gravity all right and as you can understand the thickness of this film if i call it delta we will talk about it later it is going to increase because more and more liquid is going to come in it's going to increase from the top to the bottom okay and this is generally found in clean uncontaminated surfaces okay on the other hand we also have a, something called a drop wise condensation where the vapor condenses as it comes in contact with the liquid but however it doesn't form a film instead it forms drops which rolls down again due to gravity okay so i would say is condensate forms drops which roll down due to gravity or slide down due to gravity now why does this happen because the surface you have also seen this the surface is coated with a material which coat and coat is hydrophobic which inhibits wetting right for example when you take some cream or oil and put it on your on our skin we do that right during winter especially otherwise you will have dry skin after that you go for a bath you will see that normally if you take a bath uh, or basically wash your hands let us say you will see if it is covered with oil you will have droplets why because adding this tenders the surface or renders the surface hydrophobic but the liquid cannot spread the wetting angle changes if it cannot spread the contact angle is greater than 90 degrees and the drops fall down the very classic case is you know if you look at some leaves it's called the lotus effect or the petal effect uh especially on lotus if you see a water droplet you will see that the way it remains a drop like a pearl and shine and it drops off and you see as if that is not wetted at all another example is many of these uh, skins for example the seal or some of these fishes if you if you look at their or, or the wings of a swan they come out of the water if you touch it you want to feel that it is wet okay so the surface is coated with a material that inhibits wetting okay now so this is film condensation drop wise condensation and very common example of such a material is teflon a surface can be covered with teflon and it will become hydrophobic now the question is and let me ask this to you before i give you the answer which one do you think film condensation and drop wise condensation which one do you think is desirable and when i say desirable we are talking about heat transfer so therefore which one will result in higher heat transfer what do you think
एनीवन प्लीज सर फ्रेम करना चाहिए व्हाई सर इट हैज मोर कांटेक्ट एरिया विद द सरफेस इन द सेकंड केस द फ्लूइड वांट्स टू स्टे अवे फ्रॉम दिस सरफेस एंड वांट टू हैव मोर सरफेस एरिया अवे फ्रॉम दिस सरफेस no uh, <laughs> no not see the surface is available it's just that it doesn't spread on the surface it rolls rolls off uh actually the answer is the reverse it's okay i mean you 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 had a certain you you backed up with logic but it's okay uh but in reality it's the other way why because this condensate film just like your boundary layer okay this condensate film actually forms a thermal resistance because remember the heat transfer is happening from the vapor to the surface now you have a liquid film with a finite thermal conductivity through which the heat has to conduct whereas over here you have all these exposed surfaces this will come and it will fall down so this surface will again remain exposed to to receive uh, more and more more condensed liquid or more condensate okay whereas here the surface is no longer exposed any new material will come and get added to this film any new liquid that is formed will come and get added understand so let me write that down here so the condensate forms thermal resistance to heat transfer from vapor to the surface okay of course this resistance increases with increase in film thickness okay obviously because if my insulation or if if my if this layer layer of this liquid which is a the thermal resistance is thicker we know that that at least the conduction resistance is p by k a okay similarly if the drop size is larger then at that location there will be a larger resistance but the good thing is this drop will eventually slide down and the and the surface will become exposed okay so that's why you know this is a small tip that now if you let us say this is this cell phone that i have or maybe maybe this pocket diary that i have is my is my condense condensing surface instead of holding it like this i would hold it like this because i would like it to be shorter in the direction of the film formation okay so therefore it is desirable to use short vertical surfaces or horizontal cylinders get it i would rather keep it like this and we will see the condensate will form and then beyond the bottom it will just fall off right so the film thickness cannot grow versus if i had a long surface it would have grown right so keep this in mind and this is a technique that is used quite often and this is the reason if somebody says why do i have or if somebody asks you you want to have condensation would you have a long surface or would you would you would you take a plate and roll it to a cylinder uh, this is the reason okay if my choice was to have a flat surface like this versus roll it in the form of a horizontal cylinder i would do this 
okay and uh, the reason the qualitative reason is i want to reduce the fill thickness okay so this overall is the basic fonda of condensation now what we do is we do a something a very elementary uh, analysis of what is called laminar film condensation and we cannot thank this gentleman enough wilhelm nusselt this is called nusselt analysis means possibly i don't know if i have to name the top 5 who have contributed to the development of heat transfer nusselt will be definitely there okay all right so here now what we will do is we will do an analysis on this film formation so hota kya hai so i have this surface a t wall of course my gravity acts downwards i will call this as x and this as y okay very similar type of derivation but now on a liquid film there is no air flow mean wave velocity uh, approach velocity and so on this is a liquid film that is falling over here my temperature outside the film is t sat so it's like a you know it's a steam room or steam chamber and i have brought in uh a cold surface have any of you ever been to a spa room there you will see this whole room filled with steam of course by the time the steam comes and touches your body it is it is at a much colder temperature but uh, you have a steam generator that creates the steam all right so now at any point thickness of the film i'm going to call it delta x okay and at any point or at any x there will be a mass flow rate they'll call it m dot x and this mass flow rates will keep increasing because more and more vapor will come in touch with this cold liquid film and get condensed and enter this film that is how the thickness increases okay so please keep in mind this is not like a velocity profile developing or anything it is more and more liquid that is coming in from the saturated vapor and getting condensed and adding on to this film okay now if i have to plot a few things the first thing is this downward velocity u with respect to y okay so definitely u is zero and slowly increases to reach a maximum value because the liquid is flowing here okay and then it will fall down okay what do i mean by this what i mean is the air or the steam or the vapor which is in touch with the edge of the film will also have some velocity imparted by this moving film okay all right the next thing i would like to plot is what is the temperature along the film okay here again let me draw this okay so 
my lowest temperature is TW. And my highest temperature is Tsat. And my temperature is going to increase like this. Okay? At least qualitatively, we can see this. Okay, so this Nusselt analysis, what he did was he assumed, Nusselt assumed a few things to simplify this problem. The first thing he assumed is laminar flow, constant properties. So basically, the film is in the form of you know, lamina, the like layers of liquid falling down. Okay. B. The gas is saturated vapor. at uniform temperature, and which is the saturation temperature. So which means that only mode from vapor to liquid is by condensation. Okay, so please keep these things in mind because these are very important. And of course, Nasser, the genius, he could think like these. C, the shear stress at liquid vapor interface is negligible. So what does it mean? It means that del u del y at y equals to delta equal to zero. So which essentially means that this slope is zero. Okay. U is not zero. So therefore there will be some, so the liquid, the vapor next to the liquid film at the edge of the liquid film will also have the same velocity as that of the liquid. That's what this means. Okay. And the last thing is, write it as D, Momentum and energy transport by convection, or you you find another term called advection, is negligible inside the film. Okay. See, a liquid is moving on a flat plate, so there will be some con uh, convection as well, right? But Nussel said, no, we will neglect that. Okay, so which means that the heat transfer liquid to surface is by conduction only. And which essentially means, therefore, E 
varies linearly from TW to 2 sat inside the film. Okay, so Nusselt analysis actually mentions that inside the film it's just conduction and therefore this is a linear variation. The fact that there is some bulk movement of a fluid, I'm neglecting that. as far as heat transfer is concerned. Okay, so these are the four assumptions. Laminar flow constant properties. The gas outside is at saturated temperature, no superheating or anything. So therefore condensation from the, the heat transfer from liquid, from the gas to the liquid is only by condensation. And then inside the film, it is only by conduction. And the last thing is, not last thing actually, it's, Last, the way I have written it's number third, third point is that the shear stress at the liquid vapor interface is zero. Okay, so if this is the case, how does it help us? Well, let's do some analysis now. X momentum equation. What do we know? This is for the liquid. So rho L, U del U del X plus V del U del Y. This is inside the film, keep in mind, is equal to minus del P del X plus mu L uh, okay the same order of magnitude analysis holds that is why I am keeping all these we have done this as part of force convection so mu del square u del y squared plus There is this additional buoyancy force, eh, sorry, gravitational force, so rho L by G. Now, note that del P del X in liquid film is equal to del P del X in vapor region, okay, which is outside the film. And what is that? That is equal to rho v times g. Okay. So therefore, what I have is, let's write it down, rho l, u del u del x plus v del u del y is equal to mu l del square u del y squared plus rho l minus rho v times g. Okay. So what are these? If you look at here, this is inertial force. This is friction or viscous. This is the body forces. Okay, now as per assumption D above, where we said that the convection or advection effects are negligible, it means inertial terms are negligible. 
as per assumption D, the inertial uh, effect is is negligible. Clear. So therefore, so you see why Nasser did all these analysis. Just simplifies life. Is equal to minus G Royal minus Rho V. Now can I solve this? Of course I can. I have two boundary conditions. One is u at zero equal to zero. The other is del u del y at y equals to delta is also zero. So if you put these in, what you get is, this will give you u as a function of y, multiply it twice, that's all, okay? G rho L, minus rho v divided by mu l, okay? And then there will be a delta squared and what you have is y by delta minus half Okay, so this is an expression. Again, once again, you are not expected to remember or memorize any of these, but this gives you what? The velocity. So this gives x velocity inside the film. Okay. But do I know everything? I don't know what is delta. Delta is the fill thickness, fine. We do not know delta, and which is a function of x. We need to find that out, right? Okay, so we will see that. Second is, if I talk about local mass flow rate of the condensate, okay? Per unit depth. Okay. So what is that? We denote it as, uh, as what is it? This is lambda or gamma? Whatever. <laughs> that is m dot x by w, where w is the width in the third direction. Now what is that going to be? If I take at any x, and I have a, what is mass flow rate? Rho A V or Rho A U, in this case U, in the x direction. So it will be Rho L right? U Y and this is at any Y times D Y and this y has to be integrated from zero to delta. Okay. So if you do this, put that uy expression over here, what you will get is g rho l rho l minus rho v times delta cubed over three 
else. Okay. Let us call this equation one. Now, this is a bit of a mathematical exercise now, but there is physical explanations involved as well. Acha, next, what we do is we are going to take a small uh, element of height delta x inside the film. So let us say this is my element inside the liquid film. Okay. So this is dx. Okay. So if I have m dot x coming in, I have m dot plus d m dot leaving, where d m dot is the amount of vapor that condenses into this liquid film that condenses and adds into this liquid film over this distance dx. Okay. So inside you have this is liquid film. Okay. So as a result, how much is the heat transferred into the film from the vapor? dQ would be dm dot times HFG agree okay so let's write that down take an element i dx at x element of liquid film condensed film at x so i can write dq is hfg times dm dot and that is also equal to A steady state if this is the amount of q double prime this is the heat flux i can also write this is equal to q double prime x times w dx where w is the width of the plate okay so I will name this as equation two. Now, what did we say about the heat transfer inside the liquid film? It is only by conduction. Okay. So also Q double prime. Is equal to what? KL T sat minus TW by delta. Since we transfer. inside the film is by conduction only. Agree? So now what we can do is we can do some mumbo jumbo combining all these equations one, two, and three. What I can write is
what I can write is D comma dx. If I have to write this, I have a dis I have a an expression for gamma. So D gamma dx, which is essentially D m dot by W dx. So this I can write how. The first one is what is m dot? D m dot dx is q double prime w over hfg and q double prime is kl t sat minus tw by delta. Okay, so I can write it as kl t sat minus tw. By delta HFG. Take okay. a right from here. DM dot DX is Q double prime times W divided by HFG. So W cancels out. Q double prime is KL T sat minus TW by delta. And that is equal to if I now go to the gamma expression and just differentiate, which is my equation one. So I will have all of these, then everything is constant. Delta is of course a function of x. So it will be uh, delta cubed d delta, right? Or I'm sorry, delta cubed should be three delta squared by three. So three, three cancels out. And uh, yeah, then d delta dx. So let's write that down here. All these things g, Rho L, all these constants. Let me write down first. Rho L minus Rho V divided by instead of 3 mu L, I'm writing just mu L because I will have a 3 delta squared in the numerator. And then I will have D delta dx. This will be exact differentials. Okay. So look here. If you just take the last two terms over here, you can take delta on one hand, all that stuff. And what you get is delta cubed T delta is equal to KL mu L T sat minus TW divided by a bunch of constants here. And DX. OK. So now do I get an expression for delta? Of course I do. So this gives you, if you integrate it, very simple integration, delta x. So this will delta to the power four by four. So four goes up, and nothing else. Four, kl, mu l, t sat minus tw times x. Okay, because dx integrates to x divided by g rho l rho l minus rho v hfg and this whole thing to the power one by four okay And so therefore, this gamma x now becomes, what was gamma x? Let's go up. 
G rho L, etc., delta cubed. So let's put all of those here. Now I have a function of delta where everything is known. Okay. So gamma x, therefore, is G rho L, rho L minus rho V divided by 3 mu L. And it was delta cubed. So it is this 4 KL mu L T sat minus T W X divided by pretty much what you have. To the power three by four. Hmm. So this is the derivation. Okay. So let me quickly now go to a slide set, and of course, I'm going to take it up on Monday again. But let me just show you. This will be a very simple thing that I made here. So this talks about what we just said, film condensation, drop voice condensation, blah, blah, blah. Then on a vertical plate, we have derived these expressions. We have found the expression for delta, and we have found the expressions for uh, flow rate per unit width. And I'm going to talk about average Nusselt number tomorrow, or day after tomorrow. Uh, but this is the expression. Okay, It turns out to be as shown here. Okay, so we will take it up from here. And then after this would be pretty much uh, some correlations again. Okay, so I think on uh, what I will do is let me end the slideshow now. I will share this slide. All I wanted to show you is that you will, it will be a combination. The derivations will not be done on the slide set. Uh, it is what you will have from your class notes. And the slide set will also be there with you. So that's condensation. Primarily, this is the understanding part. After that, again, it's more about physical visualization of how the film is forming and falling down, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, and then appropriate correlations to be used. All right. Uh, I think I spoke a lot today. But uh, hopefully, you have understood what I wanted to say. I know I got a bit. I, I could have put these in the slide and gone fast, but I wanted to go through step by step uh, so that you understand what I'm doing. Okay. Who knows? Maybe there will be one of you will be will come up with some some analysis like Nussel did <laughs> several decades back and uh, on, on some topic. But at least the thought process of some of these great scientists, how they could see and visualize and determine where to come up with simplifications is really something that fascinates me. Okay. Thank you very much, friends, and I will see you again on Wednesday morning.